RollForCrit.com presents How to Play Mysterium in 5 Minutes or Less or More. Mysterium is a cooperative, spooky, haunted house adventure in which a group of psychics must work together with a ghost to solve a murder mystery. Designed by Alexander Nevsky and Oleg Sidorenko and published by Libelu. Before the game begins, one player will be chosen as the ghost who has been murdered, while the rest will be psychics trying to uncover the circumstances of the death. The ghost player sits behind this screen and can never speak, because of that whole death thing. The ghost's objective is to give the psychic players clues via illustrated cards that will lead them in the direction of solving the mystery. There are three types of cards to focus on in Mysterium, characters, locations, and objects. Depending on the number of players and chosen difficulty level, you will randomly choose a certain number of each of those card types and lay them out on the table in groups. The ghost will then choose a set of three cards at random from the ghost versions of those selected card groups and assign one of those sets to each player, placing them in the card slots behind their screen accordingly. In this way, each psychic player is assigned one character, one location, and one object, but only the ghost player knows what each of those are. When the game starts, the ghost will draw a hand of seven cards. From this hand, they decide which cards will make good clues for which players. Players must first determine which is their character, then their location, and finally their object. For example, the ghost might give one player this card with food on it to indicate the chef character. However, the food also looks to be in the shape of a car, so it could be a clue for the driver. How they decide what the clues mean is completely up to the ghost. It can refer to the image itself, the colors, the shape of something, anything they think will be a good hint. But again, they cannot speak. The ghost must give each player at least one card each round, but they can give more than one. After giving cards to one player, the ghost redraws up to seven cards in hand and repeats the process with another player until everyone has their cards. If the ghost is really stuck, they will have a number of crow tokens. They can discard their entire hand and draw a new one once per game for each crow token they have. It's up to the players as a group to discuss and to try to figure out which cards were meant for which player. Clues are given out face up and can be discussed as soon as they're put into play. Once every player has their cards, the timer is flipped. Players must choose a card before this timer runs out. They do so by placing their colored crystal ball piece onto the card of their choosing. More than one player can pick the same card if they both think it belongs to them. Players also have clairvoyancy tokens with check marks and X's on them. They can use these to try and predict whether someone else's guess is correct or incorrect. If their prediction is right, they move up one point on the clairvoyancy track, which we'll get to later. Multiple of these tokens can be used per turn, but players won't be able to use them again until the start of the fourth round of the game. After the timer runs out, the ghost reveals who was correct and incorrect in their choices. Players who got it wrong have to wait and try again the next round, receiving a new set of clues to complement their original cards. Players who were correct take their chosen card and place it in their player envelope. They get to move on to the next phase, trying to guess either their location or object card. If they successfully guess all three, they get bonus clairvoyance points and can still assist the other players. The game lasts seven rounds. Once the big clock strikes eight, if everyone hasn't successfully found their cards, the game ends in a loss. Once every player is successful, the final round begins. Now, the psychics each lay out their final three cards and assign them a number with a special token. One of these groups will be the final solution to the mystery. The ghost chooses which group it will be based on which cards they have in hand that give the best clues. But the final round is a little bit different. This time, the ghost must choose exactly three cards to indicate one of the groups, and each card can only be a clue for one aspect, one for the character, one for the location, and one for the object. Once chosen, these cards are shuffled and revealed in a random order. Here's where the clairvoyancy comes in. Anyone who reaches the highest tier on the clairvoyancy track gets to see all three cards before guessing at the final puzzle. The middle tier only gets to see two, and the bottom tier only one. Psychics must vote for which group they think is correct in secret without discussing it at all. They do so by placing a numbered token into their envelope and not revealing it until all votes are in. Whichever group has the highest amount of votes is chosen as the player's collective guess. The ghost lets them know if they're right, in which case they win. Otherwise, they lose. Spooky. In conclusion, receive visions, interpret visions, haunt your friends, solve the mystery.
um mysterium that's mysterium in a nutshell did you get all that 